Hi guys, let's have some fun with modifying our portrait photos so that they look even better than you've got them now. And we can do this by applying lens blur to selected areas in Affinity Photo on the Windows PC and we can do it in just a few easy steps. So let's set up the image. We'll begin. I'll be using a stock image from Pixabay in the stock studio for this tutorial. You can find other stock photos of people or objects from Envato Elements, for example. See the links in the description. For this how-to, it helps if you choose a stock image where the model has edges that you can see clearly. It's also an added bonus if the background is not too distracting. This tutorial is very similar at the start to my previous one on lens blur. So don't be confused if it seems familiar. So let's create a new project. Simply use a standard photo preset and give it a transparent background. And you can see the transparency um, item there is ticked so that you have a transparent background. Now selecting the image, open the stock studio and locate the image or a suitable image. Or of course you might use your own image from the Photos app. Drag the image onto the canvas. And of course it will be the wrong size, but we can easily fix that in the Transform Studio. And you can see that down in the right hand side there. Set the image center in the focus point settings, that's the middle dot with the red arrow is pointing to, and enable the lock that the yellow arrow is pointing to in the width and height, and steadily reduce the image size to fit the canvas. That draws the image into the center of the canvas so that you can find it. If you leave it set to the top left hand corner of the focal point, it disappears off the side. You have to go find it. Quite difficult sometimes. You may lose a bit of the image, but that's okay. Of course, we're going to lose most of it anyway in just a moment. Now, for security, especially if you are using your own images, you should duplicate the image and lock the original. Unselect the original and just use your duplicate. You can see what I've done in the layers panel there. Now we're ready to start. Next we need to create a selection of the background behind the model you want to focus on. So select the Smart Selection Brush tool in the toolbar. And that's it there. Now we need to select out the background area around the model. Now, this can be your model or even the background behind an object that may be the focus of a sales pitch, for example. However, set the brush width initially to a quite small area, especially if your model has soft edges like hair. Here I've set the width to 30 pixels. Now let's begin our selection. You can see right up the top there, I've got the mode is add, subtract, width and 30 pixels along the top toolbar there. Now you'll see the crawling ants appear around the edges of the image as you select the area. And you can see it here. I've got it enlarged slightly to make it easy to see. So add or subtract areas to fine tune it. You can be exact as you like, but don't spend a lot of time initially. This is an exercise in how to do it. When you're happy, select refine and look for obvious bits you may have missed. Bits that you need to touch up. And this is the refine image, nicely picked out. And when you're happy, you know how to brush over the edges to add and subtract pieces. The crawling or marching ants will become visible again once you tap apply. Now we need to apply the blur to the selected areas, which of course are the background. We can do this by adding a live filter so that we can come back and edit the image later if needed. If you just use a direct filter, it alters the image and you can't come back and edit it. But this way, we create a mask and you can edit it. Add Live Filters creates a mask of your action. And you can select the Live Filters layer from the Layer tool. Go up to Layers, down to New Live Filter Layer, and across to Blur. And from there you can set it. I'm going to use the Live Filters because I may want to alter it later. So select Live Filters, then Lens Blur. You can see the blur has been selected, brings out a drop-down menu, and Lens Blur is there. 
Really interesting to experiment with some of those, but we'll stick with lens blur at the moment. At this stage, the only setting you need to change is the radius one. And I've set mine to 60 pixels, and you can see the blur has been applied nicely. Not to the girl, but only to the background. And you can experiment with the other options as you like. Now we can see the blur filter mask applied to the image. You can see it on the layers panel there. There's a lens blur mask there. Now I've also tapped select in the top toolbar and then deselect to remove the crawling ants. And I've clicked on the move tool outside the canvas to hide the boundaries. The particularly intrusive window stones are now much softened and faded into the background. The whole image is much more now much more focused on the model, not the stones and the stairs in the background. Now, so that's the end of this little tutorial. Short and sweet. I told you it was easy. And you can see its potential, I'm sure. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click on the thumbs up to like.